Hey y'all, it's Mary Hyatt, and I'm so excited you're here for this month's topic, which is all about manifestation. This month, we're going to get into the nitty gritty on how to create what you want in your life, your business, and your relationships. Because we're not just going to arrive at where you want to go by default, it has to be by design. Now, I cannot wait to show you how to become a powerful manifester because this is seriously one of my favorite topics to talk about. So stay right here and let's hop into it. Welcome to the Living Fully Alive podcast with Mary Hyatt, here to help you find your authentic voice, learn how to love yourself, and embrace your life. And now, your host, life and mindset coach, body love advocate, and doTERRA presidential diamond, Mary Hyatt. Hey, everybody. It is Mary, and I am so excited about today's second episode in this month's theme all about manifestation. Last week, we talked about the fundamentals. We got into the five-step process of how to manifest and create anything that you want. And I think that that was such a helpful starting place to kind of get the basics of what uh, manifestation is and give you a little bit of a step-by-step guide as to how you can actually manifest what you want. And today I have the privilege of bringing on a special guest to continue this conversation about manifestation and give it more of a personal little spin here. So today I have Jen Mazur, who is known as the queen of manifestation. She has always been able to dream up outrageous adventures and actually live them out. From rubbing elbows at a small private cocktail party hosted by Martin Scorsese, to living rent-free in the East Village of Manhattan for 10 years, (laughs) y'all, to paying off over $38,000 of debt in less than a year, having her artwork published in the New York Times, traveling the world, meeting the man of her dreams, a successful rock star, giving birth at home to a beautiful daughter, and starting a green school in Africa. Jen is a sought-after transformational speaker and coach. She teaches people how to manifest their biggest dreams while making an impact in the world. She is known for her signature manifestation master's program and private success coaching. She is the author of Manifesting Made Easy and co-founder of the board game Sparked. Her work has been featured in the New York Times, Fast Company, New York Magazine, Real Simple, Cosmopolitan, Inc., Marie Claire, ABC, and more. So I know you are going to absolutely love this conversation with Jen. So without further ado, here is my interview. Hey, everybody. It is Mary, and I'm so excited to be in this conversation with you today about manifestation because last week we got into the basics of manifestation and talked about what it is and kind of how you can begin to open yourself up to creating more of what you desire and even talking a little bit about some of the common pitfalls that people fall into when they're thinking about manifesting and just what a beautiful partnership this is in our co-creation of our life, of our future. And I think it's really fun, as you guys know, to bring on special guests to talk about the theme of the month because I know a little bit about a lot of different things, but I'm not an expert really in one thing. So it's just fun to bring on people who are truly experts in their field and have devoted their life to talking about topics. And I'm so excited for the guests today. You guys heard in the intro, she is a badass. She is amazing. She is one of those people that when you start to follow her and you see the work she is doing, her life is a beautiful representation of what she teaches, which is so cool to be able to see tangibly, like in real life, how this idea of manifestation actually works. And so I'm so excited to bring on the guest today, who is Jen Mazer. Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Man, so I want to like hop right into this because I feel like this is a conversation that we could probably just have for hours and hours, <laughs> but I know that like there are certain things that I want to ask you and, and really dive into this idea of manifestation even deeper because you are a pro at this point. Um, so before we hop into kind of like talking about manifestation 
really in depth. I want for my audience to get to know you a little bit better. And if you could rewind the clock and share with us kind of how you got to be this coach and this author and to do this work, like I'm imagining that this wasn't necessarily always the the way it's been. So rewind us and take us to kind of the before Jen and then how you got to be where you are today. So I have always actually been an amazing manifester, but my background is as an artist. Um, I went to art school, had my art shown in the New York Times and New York Magazine, had shows here in New York. And um, among my friends, I was just always the friend who, every time we got together, I had this other outrageous story of something that I manifested. And I think the biggest one, which is why one of my girlfriends gave me the nickname Queen of Manifestation years ago was because I manifested living rent free in Manhattan in the East Village in my own apartment that I renovated with a jacuzzi for 10 years. I lived there rent free. Um, And more crazy, amazing stories. We had a theater downstairs um, that we built in our building, like a little black box 30 seat theater. And we used to have jazz concerts there every Christmas the famous musician Wynton Marsalis would play a show for us and we recorded it in 2003 and put out an album with Blue Note Records and it was nominated for a Grammy you know I started meeting a lot of the the people who I used to admire like filmmakers at a private cocktail party with Martin Scorsese or backstage at the UN with Whoopi Goldberg you know I live in New York but all these things started coming to me, like, you know, people in the art world, because that was my, you know, my background, or, um, or, you know, then it was um, spiritual teachers, when I started really getting into that, who I, I became friends with. And so it really was just organic that my friends started asking me, what are you doing? You know, can you teach us um, what you're doing? And I started out years ago, I think one of my friends had a get together on New Year's Eve and she invited me to come and do like a little visioning workshop and people were going to make vision boards and you know Um, so that's how it really started and then I I did my first online program Manifestation Masters and honestly I've been doing that same program because it works to this day I think I channeled it Mm -hmm. Um, and then people started asking me you know for private coaching and, and, and masterminds and retreats. And, and it just kind of took off. Um, and it's really, it came to me naturally, but it doesn't come to everybody naturally. So my whole thing is how can I make it easier for you? Because I think most people are overcomplicating the manifestation process. And if once you realize that you're like, Oh, it's so simple. Right. Yeah. And, and I love this because I think this is so beautiful to hear that this is something that is just innate in you. And I think that like one of the things that I've been wrestling with as I've been getting more like deeper and deeper into this work and I've been practicing just sort of the idea of manifestation for many, many years now. But to me, it's like what I keep coming back to is I think it actually is innate in all of us. I think we've just sort of like lost our way from it. And we've, we've let other voices become really loud. We've let the fear become really loud. We've let the doubt, life experience, old beliefs, whatever it might be. But I think it's like, if we were to really get quiet and slow down, this is something that I feel like every human being is born with. And for, for you, like, did you have anybody in your life growing up that helped you recognize that or cultivate it? Because I feel like typically, at least in my experience, it's been that I can remember times where I had this ability or I was like clued in that maybe this, this gifting. And yet I had the opposite, which was the discouragement of it. Like, oh, this is, this is either demonic or evil or a um, very conservative Christian. And so there was a lot of um, voices that sort of in a way, train me to think very pragmatically, very logically, and sort of disconnect me from that innate gift. But it sounds like you didn't ever lose touch with that. So was that a byproduct of your environment? Like, or is it just something that you just got lucky with and I never had to? Both. Yeah. I mean, I'm very grateful. I have two amazing parents who are still married, you know, yeah. and very nurturing. And 
um, and recognize my talents as a visual artist when I was young. So they took me to art classes. So in my mind, you know, I might not have been the best at school or, or compared to my sister, you know, who was really a great academic or whatever. I mean, I was fine, but my thing was art, right? And so they really encouraged that in me. And I think because I viewed myself as an artist, um, it was like, I could imagine things and then actually create them. And, and, you know, I was so lucky to be able to have amazing teachers who helped me actually create the things that I imagined. Um, and yeah. I think that same process is how we all manifest. We are all artists manifesting the canvas of our lives and mm. first need to imagine it in order to actually live it out. If we can't imagine it for ourselves, we're not going to manifest it. It starts with opening up to possibility because that's the first place we kind of stop ourselves from actually getting what we say that we want is because we don't allow ourselves to believe that it's actually possible. And that's yeah. the whole law of attraction. If you believe it, then yes, it can happen. And so I think a lot of people get confused with how manifesting works in the first place because yeah. I've taken psychic training classes, okay? When we are tuning into our intuition, we use our imagination. So it feels like you're actually making things up when you're tuning right. in. And so it starts with us imagining what's possible for us. And it's not just I alone am imagining this and I want to manifest this and make it happen. You're actually tuning in to what's there for you already. Mm. So if you can just like play with this idea, even if it feels like it's mind blowing, that you're not imagining what you want you are intuiting what is actually going to happen when you start to write out your intentions and get in touch with what your desires are for manifesting. Then you're going to go about it from a completely different way. You're not going to just try to make things, think, you know, things happen, but I don't yeah. know. You're going to like, okay, for example, I had the idea to write my book, right? And I said it out loud for the very first time. I was on the phone with my coach at the time. And like any good coach, you know, I said, oh, I, I have, I think I have a book within me. And she was like, awesome, Jen, you know, I can help you. I didn't take any action on it, mm. but I was, my belief and my desire was affirmed, right? It was like, yes, you're going to write a book, right? Nobody was yeah. saying, oh, you can't do this. Um, even though I'd never written a book proposal, didn't have any connections, you know, um, and a week later, I got an email from a publishing company asking me to write a book. I kid you not. Wow. From my contact form on my website, my old up, not updated website, which normally <laughs> is spam. And I thought, oh God, is this like some sort of trick to get me to pay them, you know, to write a book? Right. <laughs> and it wasn't. And, you know, I, I it was a small publishing house. I'd never heard of them. My dream publishing house was Simon & Schuster. But this was some small publishing company. But I agreed to get on the phone with them. You know, they were legit. They offered me a paid book deal to write wow. my book. They were like, oh, something like Manifesting Made Easy, which is, by the way, my book title. Um, <laughs> awesome. And I was like, okay. So meanwhile, I reached out to the one friend at the time who happened to be a published author. She was a fiction writer. But, you know, I was like, do you know any literary agents, you know, to help me negotiate my book deal? And she put me in touch with a bunch of different people. Most of them said no, by the way, because I was nobody wow. heard of me. But this one woman said, yes, it only takes one, right? That's yeah. all you need. So it's never, don't be afraid of asking and getting rejected. So the one woman said, yes, I negotiated my book deal. While I'm writing my book, my small publishing house gets bought by Simon & Schuster. Wow. So I am a Simon & Schuster published author. Every time I tell the story, I get chills. That's Just amazing. like I imagined it. Now, if we think about whatever your dream is, you know, when you have the idea, for example, to write a book, most people think, oh, but I don't have enough time. I've never right. written a book proposal. I didn't have to write a book proposal, right? You know, all these things. And then we have all the excuses as to why we can't do or shouldn't do the thing that we say we want. And then we don't take action on it. Yeah. And instead, if you were like, oh my, you know, I, I want to write a book. And instead you think, oh, I'm going to be an author. Oh my God, I'm going to be a published author. I'm going to be, you know, bestseller or whatever. You can take it further. I'm going to be on Oprah's book club or New York Times bestselling author. 
you would go about it in such a different way. You would take action without fear of being rejected, like I mm. said, because you know it's going to work out one way or the other. And that's the difference between someone who is just trying to manifest and someone who is a powerful manifester. And I, I always mm. use this example of, you know, now we're in COVID-19, but when we would have parties and invite people over, <laughs> You would always have this one friend who would be like, yeah, I'm going to try to make it. And right. that friend never shows up. They just feel bad. They don't want to say no, but they really don't want to come. And so we don't try. It's either yes, it's happening or no, it's not. So if you are saying yes to your dream, why go for it in the first place if you don't actually believe it's possible, right? The expectation right. piece is so important in manifesting. I love that so much because I think, you know, the idea of, um, law of attraction versus uh, taking action. Like I think of sort of the masculine and the feminine way of approaching it. So one is really feminine. One is really masculine. And I'm curious just as you're talking about this, cause you're talking about taking action and what does it look like to really commit and really like commit to the vision of it, commit to the identity of it, to the belief that this is possible. So how would you describe that? Like, what is the role of law of attraction and sort of like sitting back and like you're saying, this publisher came to you, right. letting the universe work on your behalf versus you going out and pursuing these literary agents? Where's, what's the balance there? Is it one or the other or is, is it both and? <laughs> It's both. Hey, y'all. I'm sure you've been hearing me mention my Fully Alive Circle membership, and you might be wondering what it is and how you can join. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So the Circle membership is a safe place for women to gather together in a heart-centered community to take this deep dive into personal transformation. So it's my online membership where you'll learn how to find yourself again through daily devotional practices. Inside of our private Facebook group, I share resources like guided meditations, yoga practices, essential oil recipes, journal prompts, and so much more that dive into our monthly topic that we explore right here on the Living Fully Alive podcast. And all those resources are delivered to your inbox weekly to help you create powerful change in your life. So if you're looking for an affordable way to continue your journey of living fully alive, then definitely check out the Fully Alive Circle membership. Just go to maryhyatt.com forward slash circle and you can find out all the details and join. All right. Now back to this week's episode. It's both, right? So it, yeah. I, th I think a lot of people get caught up in this, the masculine part, which you talked about, the, the law of attraction, like. I create my reality and it's up to me alone, which can get kind of narcissistic if you think about it, right? Like I'm doing yeah. this, I made this happen and I'm proud of myself, but I know that it's not just me, that I'm co-conspiring mm -hmm. with the universe, whatever your spiritual beliefs are, right? That it's not me alone, that when we open up to possibility and help, that's when things actually get bigger and better than we could have imagined on our own. So yes, we are taking action. It starts with belief. I mean, you've, you've got to start there, right? And then you're yeah. taking action and you're prioritizing the dream. Most people don't prioritize the big dream. They're just, you know, getting by and doing the things that they have to do that are on their to-do list or their plate in order to survive. And so they never get to the you know, last thing on their to-do list, which is their big dream. It always stays right. there. And it will stay there always if you just put it out to the future. So you know, a manifestation happens in the present tense. So it's not, I will do this, because then it will always be in the future. And it's not, mm. I want to do this. Because when you're saying, I want, you are reinforcing that you don't have it and you are in a lack state versus an abundant state. Now, mantras and affirmations can be weird. And this is where people get tricked up because sometimes you yeah. say, you know, like, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. And you're not. And your bank account is like withdrawn. And you're like, right. you know, <laughs> like, um, and, you, and, and it makes you feel worse, actually, when you repeat mm. those affirmations. But, but I'm doing it in the present tense and I'm saying I'm a millionaire. No, it's not just about repeating affirmations if you don't actually believe that it's true. So instead of saying the opposite of, you know, the, the lack or what it is that you don't have, I recommend that you do think something where you say, 
how can I? You open it up to a question, and that way you're not turning off possibility, but you're not saying no. You know, you're saying, okay, that's good. How can I be a millionaire? If I were a millionaire, how would a millionaire act and cultivate their finances? Maybe I could study about this, right? Maybe I would look at my bank accounts and, you know, learn about blah, 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 right? So it's like, Mm. how can I opening up to a question? So there's, there is this balancing act of, I have the belief and I'm sitting here, but I'm not just sitting here meditating all day long and visualizing and expecting everything to get brought to me. No, that's ridiculous. That's, and, and we don't live in that world. And, you know, I, part of, I think what makes me who I am is I've lived all over the world and I've studied yoga in India. I lived in an ashram, you know, did study abroad in South Africa, studied multiculturalism and social change and lived in villages. You know, like I've gone all over. And so I understand a lot of the different spirituality beliefs in different parts of the world. And it's not, I alone am doing this, but, but even if we were going to sit in meditation in a cave in India, you know, like, yeah. like that's not what most people listening to this podcast are wanting for their lives, right? It's not just right. this idea of bliss, you know, in meditation for 27 years. When <laughs> I went to one of those yeah. caves, you know, like it really happens. But no, we want to manifest things on this physical level. And I believe from a spiritual perspective, we are here in this life, in this lifetime, especially during this time of change right now, to manifest on a physical level because that spiritual mm. side feels really good. It's like it's all love on the other side, right? So why yeah. are we here? We can experience things on a physical level from a loving place. And it is this balance of, yes, I'm saying, yes, I'm receiving the universe's dream because my dream is the universe's dream for me, right? Mm. So if we can view it that way, by us pushing it away, we're actually doing a disservice to ourselves, to all the people we can help through living out our dreams. Even if your dream isn't to change the world, by you living it out, you're being in a high vibrational place and it will affect all the other people around you. It will lift everybody up. And so we're like the physical hands of the universe. We get to do these things. Because otherwise, you know, I feel like there's this part of it that, that is magical, the synchronicity that you can't explain, but it, it, you're meeting the universe halfway. You're taking action and you're open to how it might show up. It might be totally different than you thought. Nobody knew about COVID-19, you know, and what this was, but right. we all, even astrologers and psychics knew maybe something would happen, but nobody knew it was going to be this, right? So that's where like the the magic is and not, and I'm saying even with COVID-19, but like anything, it, it could happen a different way. I didn't know I was going to write my book the way that I did. Right. right. And it's going to be these surprises that come up. Like my friend who invited me to create a, an adult board game with her. Right. Yeah. And like, what? I never thought I would do that. And that was a cool surprise. And because I did that, I got invited to play it at Ted. And then I got invited to be in a Lincoln car commercial talking about the board game while I'm driving around a Lincoln getting paid. As awesome. Alan. I mean, what? I couldn't have yeah. dreamt that. That's where like these cool things come in. And I, 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 here's the thing. If you're in a place listening to this and you're feeling like you are just struggling and you don't see the silver lining, remember that all dreams have a gestation period. And I like to think about it as planting seeds. I know it's a, it's a simple metaphor, but if we think about it, you plant seeds in the dirt and your life might look like dirt right now. You can't see what is happening underneath the soil that actually those seeds first need to grow roots down in the dirt before they sprout up, right? Yeah. So don't give up on your dream. Continue to nurture those, those visions and continue to take those actions, especially now if, you know, during this time, this is the time where we're really nurturing our dreams because once things really open up, that's when, boom, yeah. you know, quantum leaps can happen. And, you know, I like to talk about bamboo. I have some bamboo in my backyard, even in New York City. Um, <laughs> but bamboo is so magical because it grows, it takes so long to grow underneath the soil. Like when you first grow bamboo, it could be like a couple years. And then literally like in 30 days, the bamboo grows once it comes out of the soil, like 30 yep. feet. 
like we're and it's like uncontrollable (laughs) uncontrollable we're constantly like new bamboo is like shooting up and if you leave it for a week you're like oh my god like it's the size of me and that's our dreams though like you can take if you've been nurturing things and you're like why is this not happening just have that faith right and continue and then boom all of a sudden you can really catapult you know and even if things happen a different way like if you were if you are driving um, you know, and I live in New York and let's say I want to drive to Atlanta and I plug yeah. Atlanta into my GPS and I'm in my car and I'm on the highway and all of a sudden like I-95 is closed, like, and you know, I'm on 95 South or whatever, you know, yeah. and that's how I'm going there. Does it mean Atlanta went away? Did Atlanta disappear mm. because the highway closed? No, yeah, no. It just means, okay, I'm not going that way. You know, there's going to be another way. And so I think a lot of people think, oh, it's not happening when an obstacle shows up. And there are Mm -hmm. major obstacles showing up for people right now. But there's always an opportunity behind every obstacle. And that's the challenge for us is to find the gratitude in the obstacle, not just after it happens, when we're like looking back, oh, well, that was actually a good time because blah, blah. Yeah. No, like during it, that's the practice. And, you know, gratitude is, it's so simple. It's something we all talk about in this, you know, world of manifestation or law of attraction. But are you actually practicing it? It yeah. does make a difference. Like, I think one of the reasons I've always been a great manifester is I always find the positive. Even if something, you know, really horrible happens, I don't stay there long. We yeah. want to feel our feelings. You don't, it, there's a whole myth that you have to be positive all the time because law of attraction, your thoughts, you know, create your reality. Yeah. But no, we don't want to pretend we're happy. Like, oh, everything's fine. And meanwhile, you're like bubbling up inside and you're wondering why things aren't working for you. <laughs> totally. Because emotions are meant to be felt. Emotion has motion in the word. We want to feel our feelings and let them out, right? That's when you have blocks and stuck energy and limiting beliefs is you haven't actually processed stuff. So we, we want to get to know our limiting beliefs and what the lessons are for us or, you know, express the rage or whatever, get it out and then come back to a place. Okay. What is good? And then it grounds you and like right in the present moment, what is good right now? Like noticing what is right around you. Literally, even if you're in a horrible place, like, you know, manic, just start by looking around and it's like, okay, I see, you know, this picture on the wall and I see this plant and, and then you begin to ground yourself and settle down and then, okay, well, I am grateful for this and I am grateful for this. And, you know, and then it, it can expand and expand and expand. And then you're back into a good place and then you can manifest from that place. Cause if you're manifesting from a place of anxiety or fear, you're putting out bad energy. You're, you're in this, which I think is part of your question, this yeah. thing about a tug of war, you're like really holding on tightly. Like it has to happen. This has to work out. Right. And that's not the kind of energy we want when we're manifesting, right? It's, it's this surrender and letting go of that string and knowing it's going to work out. I don't have to make it work out because it's not yeah. me alone doing this. I'm going to take that action. I'm going to show the universe I'm serious. I mean business about this. And then I'm going to sit back and allow it to be whatever it is. I'm not attached to it being a certain way, whether it's this job or another job or this relationship or another, because I know I'm going to have the perfect one for me that's going to feel exactly the way I want to feel when I have the thing I want. So I think one of the questions is once you get clear on what your big dream is, the next question to ask yourself is, how will I feel once I have that dream, mm. right? Because then we can get into, okay, well, if I you know, want to live in this house or be a homeowner, I'm going to feel secure, I'm going to feel spacious or you know, whatever. So then you start to yeah. feel all those things. Then when you know how you're going to feel when you have the thing you want, then you can ask yourself, how can I feel that way now? Because mm. you might not be a homeowner, but you can feel secure. You can feel spacious, right? right? So what are things that I can do to allow myself to feel the way I want to feel now? It's just like smiling releases endorphins, yeah, right? So it's like, okay, I can smile and I'll feel a little bit better, (laughs) you know? Well, and I'm just curious. So I'm just thinking like, okay, let's say, and this is, 
I feel like so common, I'm sure you deal with this all the time, where there are people who are quote unquote doing all the right things. You know, they are, they're saying the affirmations, they're doing their meditations, they're being in the state of trying to really feel into it. And yet it's not going as quickly as maybe they would like. And or it just seemingly it's like, it's not working. Like maybe just there's like obstacle after obstacle after obstacle, or they can't get past this place of just being stuck. Like it's almost like this, this place of groundhog's day, you know, where it's like, oh my gosh, here I am. I know what I want. I want, you know, better business or more money or a great relationship or whatever it might be. And yet here we are three years down the road and life seems just about the same, even though I'm doing quote unquote, all the right things. So Besides it just taking time to be made manifest, are there ways that people are sort of like cutting themselves off of the knees that are interfering with manifesting? Like, what do you see some of those almost like unconscious traps that people fall into that's blocking off yeah. that ability to, to create and to manifest? I think a lot of people, and I've been seeing this a lot recently, even with, you know, clients who I've been working with, um, First of all, everybody has limiting beliefs, right? So we don't want to be yeah. afraid of them. They're actually good things. They were there to protect us and keep us safe, you know, and yeah. some of those things were from our childhood or from, you know, society, right? So there's all of that, obviously, that we have. So it's not being afraid of like looking at, well, you know, where does this come from? Um, maybe I'm, a, you know, I, I'm afraid of being successful because if I am successful, that means everybody's going to come out of the woodwork and ask me for things, you know, yeah. or, right? Like there's, everybody has a story, whatever your story is. Um, and so it's good to kind of see if you can look at, you can answer this question. I cannot live my big dream because, and mm. see what shows up. I mean, it's such a simple thing, but like, why can't I? And just see why you're telling yourself you can't. Good. And then is that true? And you know, is it, and then is it mine? right? Or yeah. is that someone else's? Um, and, and that's just, you know, a, a great starting place. The other thing is, I think that oftentimes we repeat stories in our heads over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and if you don't, first of all, journaling is a great practice because if you don't get it out of your head, then you're repeating things. Like there was something that made me angry the other day and I just kept like repeating it until I got it out. Right. So yeah. it's just a good practice to like, get it out, empty the bucket, you know, and then move on. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, you've heard the expression, whether you think you're right or you think you're wrong, you're right. And yeah. we can prove anything right. And we see this right now in, in America that's so politicized, right? Like every side, yes. is like, well, no, this is true because look at this, you know? And it's like, okay, I can prove myself right. I could find evidence of why my life sucks, and why I'm not going to manifest my dream. If I really look, I'm going to find it. Or yeah. I could find evidence of why my dream is awesome and why I'm awesome and why yeah. this is going to happen. That's the law of polarity. Both sides of the equation exist at the same time, the mm -hmm. negative and the positive. And we, the negative is great. We, it's okay. We're not afraid of the negative. In the darkness, we get to see the stars. We wouldn't see the stars without the darkness. There's yeah. beautiful lessons with the darkness, the things that come up even now, right? Like the things, the lessons we're learning about racism or, you know, in America, and we want to see that stuff so we can make it better, right? So we want to yeah. look at what's not working in our lives because that means then we can see the contrast. Well, okay, this isn't working. So what can I do to make this better, right? Or what am mm -hmm. I tolerating? And then what's an action step I can take to make this better, right? So it's yeah. okay to look at what's not working or what I'm tolerating in my life whether it's a relationship or a job or a messy desk, right? And then, okay, what's the action step I can take to make this better? So we can look at the worst case scenario in terms of the law of polarity, and that's all right. Allow yourself yeah. to go there, then go to the best case scenario, because then that's like the emptying the bucket, like I talked about with journaling. If you get out what you think is the worst case scenario, and then you just amplify the best case scenario, it's going to be hard to actually resonate with that worst case scenario anymore because you got it out. And then yeah. you're like, yeah, this is possible. You know, I can do this. And so that's that practice of, of gratitude, number one, you know, and, and part of the practice of gratitude, I think that's good for people is 
not just being grateful for what you have, you know, or what you've manifested in the, in the past, which I talk about too in my, in my work, like getting down with PPP, which is positive proof from your past. Like remember nice. all the ways in which you've been a powerful manifester, like you've got yeah. a job or an apartment or you had a, a child or, you know, some of those milestones. Cause then you're like, Oh, if I could do that, I could do anything. Yeah. But with gratitude, in addition to your daily practice of writing down what you're grateful for each day, I like to be proud of myself. So I'm not attached mm -hmm. to the outcome of, you know, this worked out, but I'm proud that I did this thing or I showed up in this way. And I like to do that reflection every day. So it's like, I'm proud that I sent this email or I'm proud that I spent time reading with my daughter and we had that great discussion at bedtime, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm, it, it, I might not have gotten everything done on my to-do list. I don't think anybody does. That's why right. I prioritize. <laughs> but yeah. I could be in my head guilty and focused on, oh, I'm so horrible. I didn't get this done and I still have all this to do. But instead, I'm not. I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm really proud that I did this. You know, and I'm proud yeah. I took a nap. You know, I, my body needed that or whatever. You know, or I really loved that homemade breakfast like I made. You know, like, yeah. I, I, I'm glad I took a shower. <laughs> I yeah. Well, and it's just like what you're focusing on is creating more of that. I mean, it's just a tuning. It grows. Yeah. What yeah. You, as I say, you're just gross. tuning that whatever you would call the tuning fork to notice and become even like more perceptive and more aware of all the ways in which you're supported and all the ways you are taking care of yourself, all the things that are, that are going right. And that kind of snowball effect either way. I mean, whether it's focusing on what you didn't get done and the stress that is going to be there tomorrow or going, ah, I love that idea of like beyond just the gratitude, like what am I proud that I've done today or who I showed up as today or what came across my, my path that I was willing to receive today. Like, I just think that's so beautiful and kind of the next step of taking it just a little bit further. And one of the things that I love about like your book, I mean, just the title alone, that, that word easy, the idea of ease. And I love that the first publisher came to you and was like, what, what if, if you just decided to write this book, <laughs> you know, and you're like, okay, yes. And so sometimes I think that when we are thinking about creating and manifesting and we have almost like this, um, laundry list of the things that we have to do in order to manifest, it's sort of like the new, the new way of looking at spirituality or self-help or whatever. It's like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta get it right. And I've got to make sure I hit all these boxes and I got to do this and do this. So talk to us a little bit about when you think of it as being easy or, or at ease, walk us through why it's easy versus being like complicated and mysterious. Hmm. Yeah. Well, first of all, just listening to your language is so interesting because we all get caught up saying, I have to do this. I have to do that. And if we can switch our, I have to, to, I get to, it yeah. feels different in your body. So it's not just about what you say in terms of manifesting, you know, like I talked about before with affirmations, it's really a full body response of how you yeah. feel. So if you can change your language, you know, cause especially when we're stressed, I have to do this and I have to do that too. I get to do this because the truth is, mm. even if it's something that we quote unquote have to do, right? Like for work or for our families or whatever, for paying bills, if we switch it to, I get to, we find the good in mm. this situation and we have the power of choice. We have chosen these lives. Even if we say, we're not happy in whatever situation is, there is a choice. We can make a choice now to change it, right? Yeah. We're never stuck in any situation. And I think a lot of people feel stuck. And if we can remember that the natural state of the universe is motion. If you, if you think about the earth is spinning all the time, it's so slow, we don't notice it, right? Yeah. It's spinning. And then it's also spinning around the sun in addition to its spin that it has, right? If we were to zoom in at our cells in our bodies, we would see the molecules, the electrons and neurons are moving yeah. that this, you know, whatever we're listening to this on the device is, is not still, it's actually vibrating. So vibration and motion is the natural state of the universe. So that's why this yeah. coined term of high vibe is, you know, popular right now. It's, yeah. it's actually like, the energy of motion and movement. So we want to embrace change. 
And change can feel uncomfortable. And why is that? That's normal. It's because anything new that we haven't experienced yet, by virtue of it being new, any new thing we want to manifest, like being a millionaire, yeah. is going to feel uncomfortable at first because we've never been a millionaire before. So I don't know right. what that's going to feel like. And so when I start to get close to that, I'm going to get uncomfortable. And so a lot of people self-sabotage subconsciously, right? And yeah. bring themselves down to a level that they feel comfortable with. And so the challenge is to reframe discomfort. Discomfort is a good thing. It means yeah. you're about to experience something new, right? So we want to always put ourselves into situations where we're constantly growing and changing because that's the natural state of the universe. If we actually say we want the thing, you know, we want to manifest these things, then we're going to keep moving into the area of discomfort. So that's just number one, like pivot and reframe discomfort that it's a good thing. And yeah. then in terms of the, the ease, right, of manifesting, it is, it's like, we're not overcomplicating it. It's not, I have to do this and I'm attached and I'm overworking and hustling mm -hmm. to manifest. When we're coming from that needy place, like when you're dating someone and you're, you know, you have to make it work and that, yeah. you know, or, or someone's, you know, texting you all the time and calling you and you're like, oh, that's a turnoff. That's what yeah. we're doing with the universe. If we really, you know, if we, if we need it too much. So it's this balancing act of trusting and taking action, but it is easy. Like you set your intention, the universe, I like to think of it as the kitchen. If we're, if we're at a restaurant, right? We place our order yeah. in the kitchen and the kitchen's gonna make your food. The universe is a yes universe, even if it takes a, a while, or even if it comes out slightly different than you thought, you know, yeah. you're gonna get served. You're not gonna leave the restaurant without eating. And so first step is just get clear on what you want. And that's why I said, imagine and just play with the fact that you're, we're using our imagination to tune in and, and we're all walking around as energy towers, receiving information and giving off information, just like our vibe. So we're, we're kind of getting ourselves to this high vibe place, which means feeling good. What makes yeah. me feel good? How can I make myself feel good on a regular basis? And it might not be related to what I, my big dream that I'm manifesting is, but if I can get myself into a place that I feel good because I've done things that help me feel good, then I'm going to come from a great place. I'm going to give off good energy when I'm making those asks or showing up, right? And so the ease is not overcomplicating it and not, not having to make it happen, but it's this, I'm taking action and I'm trusting that it's gonna work out. I'm prioritizing it, I'm doing what I know. So I might not know how to do the thing I say I want, but I could ask someone. I could reach out to someone who maybe has done what I've done before, or I can ask a friend, does anybody know of someone who's done this thing, right? There are things I can do. So it's just finding what it is that I can do and giving ourselves love always, not judging ourselves and making it right. wrong, you know, but like, God, I'm proud that I did this and, and it's all going to be okay. And I am okay right now, you yeah. know? And just the idea of like letting it be easy. You know, I think yeah. when we're in these patterns so often of life is hard, life is challenging, life is difficult. I'm in survival yeah. mode. I'm burnt out. I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. And like that becomes our state of being. It is a mental shift. It's a whole different way of approaching life to think like, what if this could be easy? And, and then allowing it to be easy. Like what if it was already right there in front of you, you know, in so, in so many ways. And I love this idea of this kind of balancing act of, of having this intention, but then syncing up with that vibration, syncing up with the energy of it. And those energies, those frequencies, those emotions are easy. Like it feels easier to feel joy than it does anger. Now, yeah maybe not at the beginning because we're out of practice. And so we have to kind of like, like you said, like there's a part of this sort of discomfort in the moving towards joy or fulfillment or happiness or abundance or whatever it is, just because we're, it's maybe not our natural state, but like when you actually sit in that vibration, it is easier. Like it's like, ah, oh, it feels like, better. It does. Yeah. It feels so much better. <laughs> so open, awesome. Yeah. And, yes. and it's never starting, you know, when I teach manifestation, we don't start with looking and finding what's wrong, right? Yeah. Like let's just discover our limiting beliefs. No, I promise you when you start to take action on that big dream, your limiting beliefs will show up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's when you work out those, right? 
you start with imagining what's possible for you. It all mm. starts there. Get clear on what you want. There's never a bad time to do it, right? Like any time is a good time. Yes, you know, we can work with the energies and astrology. I, I start my, you know, courses on new moons because new moons are a great time to plant seeds. But yeah. honestly, you can do anything at any time. So don't, it's like, I think a lot of people are just in their heads too much. This is the overcomplicated yeah. thing. And judging, did I do this right? Oh, maybe I should be, you know, doing my gratitude this way or, you know, my affirmations this way. And, oh, this is yeah. wrong. No, if it feels good, it's right. You know, like yeah. I give you tools, but it's like, whatever feels good for you is good for you. And yes. it's not like, I think a lot of times people go in this rabbit hole of, well, why haven't I manifested my soulmate? And I've been doing this for three years. You know, why isn't this working? What is wrong with me? you know, or right. what am I doing to stop, what, what, you know, to stop myself? No, that's not the good, best question and most productive question to be asking yourself, right? Yeah. We don't start there. It's like, no, what can I do now? And what, you know, what do I want? How do I want to feel? It's, we don't start with what's wrong with me and judging ourselves because nothing's wrong yeah. with you. Nothing right. at all is wrong with you. Right. <laughs> and I love that idea. Like, at least in my experience, when I get into that head game and I, when I get into that place of questioning it is usually the exact time that I need to surrender and do less <laughs> versus do more. It's like, oh, I've been like strangling this thing. I've been like so constricted in my body and kind of going into that force and control and trying to make it happen. And I'm literally like suffocating it. I, I'm <laughs> strangling it to death versus like, oh, the reason it feels so challenging and hard is because I'm going at it from a place of effort versus allowing versus ease versus letting it be. And like I had this experience last night, the same thing. I was feeling this and I just said, I have just got to surrender this and like can this over to God because I, in my humanness and in my like need to control and to feel safe. I, I am managing it. I am managing it. And anytime I know it because of my recovery work, it's like when I'm managing what I feel like is unmanageable, I'm suffocating it. I'm, I'm strangling it. And so it's like, okay, give this over to my higher power. Like this is where I release. This is where I let go. And so I feel like when you're in that place of overthinking, it's usually a great time to just totally disconnect and let it go. Yeah. I love that. Surrender is such a good phrase. And, and, yeah. you know, and then also do something that feels good. Like, you know, stop dropping gratitude. Number one, if you're feeling, you know, really anxious, yeah. but also like for me, I love yoga or riding my bike, but everybody has something right. So it's like, yeah, maybe I put on some music and dance or open the windows and, you know, like what feels good for me or just get outside. And um, that's going to shift my energy so I can start to feel good again. Yeah. I love that. Well, to just to wrap up, I know that after this conversation, my audience is going to be super excited to stay connected with you and follow everything that you're doing. And I know you have this amazing program coming out. So I want to give you a minute to just share with everybody how people can stay connected to you. And if they want to work even deeper with you, what does that look like? Sure. So everyone can find me at queenofmanifestation.com. And the course that I do is called Manifestation Masters, and it's a 40-day program that really gets you moving um, because it takes 40 days to create change in, in terms of yogic tradition to really retrain your mind and your body. And so I give you practices and you're actually doing it and it becomes easy. And we always start on the new moon. So we have a Manifestation Masters happening in July that starts July 20th. Um, and runs for 40 days. So if you're interested, you can go to queenofmanifestation.com and you'll see Manifestation Masters there and you can get all the info for that. Um, cool. That's a great thing. I've had people manifest like literally within 40 days, the new home, wow. new relationships. I mean, TEDx talks or, you know, crazy things or yes. paying off their credit cards, which is huge um, yeah. for a lot of people. And then, you know, there are other ways to work with me if you're interested in, move, you know, going further. I do coach with people privately and run masterminds and, um, and then there's my book, Manifesting Made Easy. It's available anywhere that books are sold. And my board game, Sparked, which is spelled S-P-A-R-K-E-D. But you can find it all at queenofmanifestation.com. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure to link to all of that so you can find it <laughs> easily. And it'll be so just effortless to connect with Jen. And 
Gosh, I mean, it really is. And I love that you have the 40 days because my experience has been is this is, this is a new habit. This is a new way of being. And when we've kind of lost the connection to that innate ability, it's almost like we have to retrain ourselves into that. And I love like having that time and that space to be able to practice it to where it is. It's like riding a bike. It's sometimes, you know, at the beginning it sucks, it's hard. And then it's like the easiest thing you've ever done in your life after a while. And I feel like 40 days, brilliant. I love that so much. Well, Jen, thank you for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge and everything in between. I'm just grateful for your voice and for your work. And this was such a gift for me to be able to like, just be in your presence and get some of that good juju energy. So thank you. Thank you for being on the show today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Yeah, you're so welcome. Well, guys, I will see you next week for our third episode in this month's topic, all about manifestation. So make sure to check out Jen's links. And then of course, tune in next week for another episode. Talk to you soon. Hey y'all, thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you got some amazing nuggets to take home and start implementing into your life. And if you're looking for the show notes and links, head on over to maryhyatt.com forward slash show. And if you loved it, why not bring your girlfriends along this journey of becoming fully alive with you? Just give a quick share of this episode to your social channels and enjoy those debriefing convos with your best. Thanks again, and I can't wait to connect with you next week.